now what is a rest any component of a partial denture on a tooth surface that provides vertical support is called a rest okay whatever which is there on the occlusal surface and provides vertical support is a rest so anything which is on the occlusal surface is a rest and the prepared surface of an abutment to receive the rest is called the rest seat so when we are making a depression on the occlusal surface for the rest that is a rest seat and the metal component which goes and adheres to the rest seat is the rest clear this is easy rest and rest seat now what are its function it maintains the components in their plan position okay because it is on the top most surface that is on the occlusal surface it actually helps to keep all the components in place that is it helps in stabilization it maintains established occlusal relationships and prevents settling of the denture prevents impingement of the soft tissue because it is on the occlusal surface it will actually prevent the denture from going down and impinging on the gingival tissue it will stay up only and it distributes occlusal loads to abutment teeth okay so these are its functions okay now whenever we are making a rest we need to follow certain rules now what are these rules the topography of the tooth that existed before the rest seat was prepared should be maintained okay now if you if you people have this tooth okay and then you make a rest surface area like this your rest should exactly go and stimulate your topography okay clear this is clear whatever depression you have made your rest should go and exactly adhere and it should duplicate your topography of the tooth the next is the outline form of an occlusal rest seat should be rounded triangular in shape with the apex towards the center of the occlusal surface i'll show you a photograph so it's clear see this is how your occlusal rest should be it should be rounded triangular with the apex towards the occlusal surface of the tooth okay next it should be as long as it is wide okay base should be at least 2.5 mm for both molars and premolars so the base of your triangle your this base of the triangle should at least be 2.5 mm for your molars and premolars so you understood your apex should be rounded triangular towards the occlusal surface and your base should be 2.5 mm wide and it should exactly simulate your normal tooth okay what happens or the base the base should be 2.5 mm wide the base of the triangle should be 2.5 mm wide there are three points to be remembered the triangle should have a rounded triangular apex the base should be 2.5 mm wide and it should exactly help in transferring the same tooth surface that is the topography of the tooth should be maintained now got it okay now there are still more points the rest sheet seat should allow slight movement of the rest to dissipate unwanted forces okay it should allow for the slight movement of the rest the floor of the occlusal rest seat should be apical to the marginal ridge and the occlusal surface and should be concave or spoon shaped now the floor of your rest seat should be concave or spoon shaped okay it should not be box shaped like your cavity preparation it should be concave or spoon shaped the rest should be aligned to the crest of the ridge now what do they mean by this is when there are teeth like this okay this is your ridge 
So your rest should be in the line of your ridge only. Your rest should be always in the line of ridge as much as possible. Uh, see, you should not actually uh, involve the marginal marginal ridge. Yes, you have to uh, put the the mesial and the distal marginal ridges. You need to depress them a little. We'll come to that also. Obviously, you need to put a depression in the marginal ridge for your rest to attach. We'll come there. First, you pay attention to this. So it should be aligned into the crest of the edentulous ridge. Okay, this should be concave or spoon shape, and it should allow a little more of. It should allow movement. See, a reduction of a marginal ridge of approximately 1.5 mm is usually necessary to permit a sufficient bulk of metal. So you need to reduce the marginal ridge by about 1.5 mm. Okay, now you got it, sir. So the dimensions are: it should be rounded, triangular in shape, apex, 1.5 mm wide, uh, 2.5 mm wide, and marginal ridge should be reduced. Length should be 1.5 mm. Uh, marginal ridge should be reduced for 1. Marginal ridge should be reduced to 1.5 mm. It should be concave, spoon shaped. It should be aligned to the crest of the ridge, and it should allow slight movement of the rest. Okay. So you understood the rules for making a rest. It's made on the occlusal surface, proximal occlusal surface, or we'll come to that when we classify rests. Okay, where these rests can actually sit on all what surfaces they can sit. We will come to that. Right now, just pay attention to the basic rules of the rest. Okay. Okay. So all of you understood the rules of the rest. Okay, there is one more. The angle formed by the occlusal rest and the vertical minor connector from which it originates should be less than 90 degree. Okay. Now what they say is, if this is your uh, rest and this is your minor connector, it should be less than 90 degree. Why? Because your rest cannot lie like this. Okay, with the minor connector, it cannot be 90 degree or more than that. It will displace because it has to go along with the tooth, so it should be less than 90 degree. Okay, it should be less than 90 degree to the minor connector. So these are the basic rules. So remember the values: 1.5 mm wide, 2.5 mm wide, 1.5 mm reduction of the marginal ridge, rounded triangular apex, concave or spoon-shaped floor, along with the crest of the ridge. And the angle with the minor connector should be less than 90 degree. Clear with the rules? Okay, all of you. Now the classification of rests. Now what are the different types of rests? There are many types of rests. Now on the relation to the uh, relation of the rest to the direct retainer, we have a primary rest and we have a secondary rest. Yeah, this may not be in notes. Just make a because uh, in the notes you have all the rest. This classification may not be there, but you have all the rest. Don't worry about that. Okay. So there is a primary rest and a secondary rest. Now what are these? We'll come to that later. Based on the location, if it's on the occlusal surface, it's an occlusal rest. Incisal surface, incisal rest, interproximal rest. Based on the shape, V shape, semilunar shape, triangular shape. And there are other modification also of rest. Okay, so we come to primary rest. Now, what is primary rest is? Okay, this is your primary rest. Whatever is there in the fulcrum line is your primary rest. Okay, but to prevent your rotation of the denture in the fulcrum line. We need to give an additional rest. Okay, primary rest is something which is given on your posterior most tooth, primarily along with the they go go along with the clasp assembly. This is your fulcrum line. All of you know what a fulcrum line is. Okay, so when your rest is along with your clasp, 
which is along with your class assembly at the posterior most tooth are your primary rest they primarily provide whatever is the purpose of the rest but you this will cause rotation of the denture so you need an extra rest so the extra rest which which is not in the fulcrum line okay it is away from the fulcrum line is your secondary rest or auxiliary rest and this auxiliary rest was connected by the minor connector to that major connector when we did classification of minor connectors now can you uh, yeah it's an indirect retainer don't talk about that because you'll get more confused when we talk about indirect retention we'll talk about this principle now just pay attention to the fact that what is a primary rest and auxiliary rest okay and just uh, when we are talking about that i'll just like to tell you that the auxiliary rest was connected by a minor connector to the major connector remember when we classified minor connectors yeah so this is that auxiliary rest so now you got it now you you can uh, put it together you can put the yeah it is at 90 degrees to the fulcrum line no primary is along with the retentive clasp see when you are talking about the clasp there is a rest there is a body there is a shoulder there is a retentive we'll come to that later okay so rest which is along with the along the fulcrum line or along the clasp assembly is uh, the primary rest and auxiliary rest is something which is not in the fulcrum line which is away which is an additional rest just to prevent just to uh, help in stabilization and prevent the rotation of denture along the axis of rotation of the fulcrum line getting me all of you okay now okay now what is uh, this is what nalla swami says about primary and secondary rest no sir not only in distal uh, extension in any case even if your even if your last tooth is here this is your fulcrum line you can put an auxiliary rest over here it is auxiliary rest is a rest which is not in the fulcrum line which is an additional rest other than your clasp assembly okay now this is now according to uh, mcrecken he says when an existing occlusal rest preparation is inclined apically towards the reduced marginal ridge and cannot be modified or deepened because of fear or perforation of the enamel or restoration then a secondary occlusal rest is employed what he says is now if you have a, a tooth which has a reduced marginal ridge okay you have a tooth like this your abutment tooth has a reduced marginal ridge so if you try to make a rest seat a deep rest seat what will what will happen already your marginal ridge is reduced you are reducing more one point it is atrated it is a tooth which is atrated okay or is restored with something and the marginal ridge is not up to the entire mark it is not proper it is reduced so now if you try to make a rest seat area in this place what will happen when already your occlusal surface is yes it will lead to a perforation of the enamel or of the pulp or of the restoration so what do you do in such cases when you have a when you have a tooth which is uh, like this you give a small rest over here and you give an additional rest on the other side okay to prevent the because this rest will not serve the entire purpose because it is not up to that mark it is a very minimal shallow area created so we'll create an external uh, external part on the other side also we will create a rest on the other side of the tooth also it is just like we are not able to support the tooth with one finger so we are applying pressure with the other finger also on the other side okay so this is your secondary occlusal rest which will actually help in providing you the given which will help in doing the rest job getting me 
So according to Nalla Swami, he says primary rest is along with the clasp assembly and auxiliary rest is something which is not in the fulcrum line. But yeah, on the same Tudradika. But Mekrekan says secondary occlusal rest is something like this. When there is a reduced marginal ridge, instead of having one rest area, we give an additional rest area on the opposite side which serves the purpose. So that we have proper retention or you can say proper stability or support. Okay, that is a secondary occlusal rest, an extra occlusal rest. Secondary occlusal rest is an auxiliary rest. Yeah, Nala Swami should have followed McRicken, but he didn't. So there are a lot of confusions, but always go with the McRicken book. McRicken says secondary occlusal rest is given in such conditions. And secondary occlusal rests are auxiliary rests. Auxiliary is an addition. Okay, addition to the primary rest. No, no, only one is secondary. The one we are giving on the opposite side is secondary. Okay. Now clear with secondary occlusal rest and primary occlusal rest. Okay. Now we come to uh, the place where it is. According, see, I told you, no, it is classified according to this based on the relation to the direct retainer that is primary and secondary. Now based on the location. So wherever it is placed, it is named after that. If it's on the occlusal surface, it's occlusal. If it's on the incisal, it's incisal. Now we'll talk about the occlusal rest, okay? Now occlusal rest, we have already talked a lot about that. That it should be spoon shaped and all that. It should be 1.5 mm wide and all. There are certain other considerations you need to know, okay? It should have a width which, it should measure half the width of the tooth, buccolingually. And one third of the tooth mesiodistally. Okay, these are the widths of, now they have given you basic rules earlier. Now they are giving you specific rules according to each rest. Occlusal rest, incisal rest, cingulum rest and all that. Okay, so when you are talking about occlusal rest, the width should be half of the entire width buccolingually and mesiodistally it should be one third of the entire mesiodistal width. Okay, next. The floor of the rest seat should be less than, this we have already learned, it should be less than 90 degree. The rest to the minor connector should be less than 90 degree and it should not be more than 90 degree to prevent displacement. Okay, that is the same rule for, now we have the same rules coming in every rest, but I'll just tell you for each there may be a uh, difference I'm telling you that. So in the occlusal rest you need to know these dimensions, okay. Uh, Buccolingually half of the width and mesiodistally one third of the width and it should be less than 90 degree. Okay, clear? Next is the, okay, this is an extended occlusal rest. Okay, it is on the occlusal surface but it is extended. Now, see, this is a case whenever there is a mesially tip molar an extended occlusal, this is also something like an auxiliary rest, we are giving additional support. So what we do, the rest should extend more than one half of the mesiodistal width of the tooth. Approx okay, here what we are doing, the occlusal rest normally should be till here. Okay, it should only be till here. But here we are extending it like a class 2 occlusal proximal preparation. We are extending it, okay. Normally it should only be till here, but we are extending it in tilted cases where we need extra support. So that is an extended occlusal rest. That's it. Okay. Next is incisal or cingulum rests. These are also known as anterior rests. Okay. Anterior rests are nothing but the rests which are on the anterior tooth. Now they can be either on the incisal surface or they can be on the lingual surface. Okay. Now there are two things you need to know here is, now which are the anterior teeth which can be used for such rest? The incisors and the canines. And which are the two surfaces? The incisal and the lingual. Okay, so there are two types of teeth and there are two types of surfaces. Now what they say is, in teeth, a canine is much more preferred over an incisor 
when a canine is not present multiple rests that are spread over several incisor teeth are preferable now what they are saying they are saying that a canine is more preferred over an incisor because it has more strength okay and also for aesthetic purposes and they are saying a lingual rest is preferable to an incisal rest that is a cingulum area rest is preferred to an incisal rest because it is placed near the horizontal axis of rotation Okay. Now what they are trying to say is, see this diagram. You people can see this slide. Okay. So they are saying that a cingulum rest is better than an incisal rest because the distance between of the cingulum and the axis of rotation is less. See this distance is less as compared to this distance. So they say when the rests are closer to the axis of rotation, it will be more stable. Okay, so you want a rest which is closer to the axis of rotation. So a lingual rest is closer or an incisal rest is closer. Which one is closer? Yes. So what they are saying here is a canine is preferred over an incisor and a lingual area is preferred over a incisal area these are the two things they are saying got it now we we'll talk about individually now incisal rest they say the incisal rest should be 1.5 mm away from this angle proximo incisal inc incisal angle it should not be there if you have to place a rest on the incisor there is no alternative the rest area should be 1.5 mm away from the proximal incisal angle you should not fracture the proximal incisal proximal incisal angle secondly the dimensions it should be 2.5 mm wide okay this should be 1.5 mm in length that are the dimensions to be learned it should be 1.5 mm away from your proximal incisal angle it should be 2.5 mm wide mesio distally and 1.5 mm wide occluso gingivally Depth is separate for us. Depth we have already talked that it should be spoon shaped or calf uh, shaped. Okay, here they are they have not talked about the depth. Here they have just just talked about the dimensions. Depth also should be taken care. It should not be very deep. It should be spoon shaped. It should not be very. Uh, it should not be box shaped. Okay, so these are dimensions of incisal rest. Cingulum rest is it should be two mm wide labial lingually. And it should be 1.5 mm deep when measured inside the gingival. Okay, here they are giving you the depth. So these are the dimensions you need to learn. Just uh, see if they are there in the notes. If they are not there, just make a note of it. This is a cingulum rest. It is better than the incisal rest because it is near the axis of rotation. It should be 2.2 mm wide labial lingually, and depth should be 1.5 mm deep. Okay, clear? Understood the occlusal rest, the extended occlusal rest, the incisal rest, and the cingulum rest. Okay. Now the interproximal occlusal rest. What is this? This is something where we put the two rests over here in the interproximal area. Okay. These are the interproximal rests which are together. Okay. Now, what will you? Okay, we'll come to the modification later. Before you get confused, these are interproximal rests, interproximal occluso rests, which rest on the occluso and the proximal surfaces of two teeth. So they are interproximal between two occlusal surfaces of the teeth. Okay. Okay. Now this was that was based on the location. Now based on the shape, that is easy. When it is triangular, is known as a triangular rest. It's V-shaped and this is semi-lunar. This is clear according to the shape. Okay. Okay. Now we'll come to the modifications of the rest. Now, what are the modifications? Is a partial denture that is totally tooth supported by means of cast retainers on all abutment teeth. We use intracoronal rests for both. Now, what is intracoronal rest? Is something which is inside the coronal surface of your tooth. It does not lie outside. It is like uh, 
it is like creating this box shaped structure on your proximal surface okay this is a structure on your proximal surface where your rest goes and get engaged so it is more aesthetic because your occlusal surface will actually not show you the rest okay but this can only be used when it's totally to supported by means of cast retainers yeah they were all extra coronal but don't uh, divide it according to that because there are retainers classified as those things here you keep them as intra coronal others were all outside they were on the lingual surface on the incisal surface on the occlusal surface interproximal surface you could see all those these rests are actually inside the uh, part of the tooth okay they are actually embedded inside the tooth that is why they are intra coronal okay the rest goes and gets added there now one thing is aesthetically it is good secondly it gives occlusal support and horizontal stabilization okay because it has it is covered from all sides it pro helps in horizontal uh, providing horizontal stabilization also and occlusal support also other is uh, provide only occlusal support this provides both this is one mcq asked this is an extra advantage of intra coronal rests uh see sora it is something like a box shaped proximal preparation where you do not prepare the occlusal surface you only prepare the proximal surface you remember box slot preparations in class 2 preparations it is something like that yeah so whenever you prepare a box in your proximal surface your rest goes and gets seated intra coronal inside the crown so it is more aesthetic and it also helps in providing horizontal stabilization because it is covered from all sides the rest will not get displaced the marginal ridge is intact okay now understood that's a modification see there are again disadvantages of it there may be uh, you may perforate the pulp okay yeah there are disadvantages but it's just a modification next modification is when there is a space between two teeth no why marginal ridge cannot be intact that was the general rules dara that was for all the normal ridge these are modifications Okay, now we come to the modifications of the rest. Now, what are the modifications? Is a partial denture that is totally tooth supported by means of cast retainers on all abutment teeth. We use intra coronal rests for both. Now, what is intra coronal rest? Is something which is inside the coronal surface of your tooth. It does not lie outside. It is like uh, it is like creating this box shaped structure on your proximal surface okay this is a structure on your proximal surface where your rest goes and gets engaged so it is more aesthetic because your occlusal surface will actually not show you the rest okay but this can only be used when it's totally to supported by means of cast retainer yeah they were all extra coronal but don't uh, divide it according to that because there are retainers classified as those things here you keep them as intra coronal others were all outside they were on the lingual surface on the incisal surface on the occlusal surface interproximal surface you could see all those these rests are actually inside the uh, part of the tooth okay they are actually embedded inside the tooth that is why they are intra coronal okay the rest goes and gets added there now one thing is aesthetically it is good secondly it gives occlusal support and horizontal stabilization okay because it has it is covered from all sides it pro helps in horizontal uh, providing horizontal stabilization also and occlusal support also other rest uh, provide only occlusal support this provides both this is one mcq asked this is an extra advantage of intra coronal rest uh see sora it is something like a box shaped proximal preparation where you do not prepare the occlusal surface you only prepare the proximal surface 
You remember box plot preparations in class two preparations? It is something like that. Yeah. So whenever you prepare a box in your proximal surface, your rest goes and gets seated intracoronal inside the crown. So it is more aesthetic. and it also helps in providing horizontal stabilization because it is covered from all sides the rest will not get displaced the marginal ridges intact okay now understood that's a modification see there are again disadvantages of it there may be uh, you may perforate the pulp okay yeah there are disadvantages but it's just a modification next modification is when there is a space between two teeth no why marginal ridge cannot be intact that was the general rules dara that was for all the normal ridges these are modifications modifications do not generally go with the general rules they are modified due to some reasons to provide extra support to provide extra aesthetics okay Yeah, so slot will go in the proximal area only. The occlusal surface. Will, you people have learned slot preparation in class two. Remember, whenever there is an edential space, you and there is proximal caries, you just prepare the proximal area. You don't go occlusally. You just prepare the proximal area. So this is something similar. Okay, getting me. So intracoronal is. provide extra aesthetics and horizontal stabilization that is the mcq asked okay now the next modification is if there is a space between two areas what you can do is it is filled there is a modified rest and this is a pontic is at the rest is attached to the pontic okay so this is a modified rest which helps to this is an interproximal rest that is what i was trying to tell you in interproximal rest that is there is space between the two we can place a pontic along with the rest okay that is a modification next is i told you a canine is always better than an incisor remember but if there is no canine which is not aesthetic this pontic class No, no, no. Pontic of normal tooth. This is white tooth. Only the rest are made up of metal. Okay, the tooth is not metal. The tooth is normal. Okay. Next is I told. Got it? Who had a doubt? Radhika. Okay. now i told you a canine is always better than an incisor but in cases where you cannot have there i actually don't know how to connect it there must be the similar way of casting and all and then making your acrylic teeth first casting will be done with the entire processes and then your uh, rpd will be placed i actually don't know how it is done i'll get back to you on this tomorrow Okay, when we have the next class. Okay, now my now I was telling you that a canine is always better than an incisor. But in cases where you cannot take the support of the can uh, canine, what do you do? You multiple incisal rests are connected lingually by a plate of metal. Okay, all multiple lingual rests are connected with a pl uh, metal plate so that you get additional support. Okay, so these are the three modifications: intracoronal rest, pontic class press, and multiple incisal rest. Okay. 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 So the floor of the rest seat should be at what angle? Or the rest seat should be at what angle to the minor connector? Yes, less than ninety degrees. Good. multiple incisal rest provide three good single am rest is preferred over incisal rest by seven good
good. Extended occlusal rest is used in which case? Two. Good. Marginal rest should be reduced by four. Rest seat is what? Rest area. Sorry. Or the rest seat. One. Yes. Intracoronal retainer provides what? Yes, it provides horizontal support and occlusal stabilization. Okay. Okay, so what you people are not clear is about the pontic class, how it is adhered to that. Other than that, you people have any other doubts? Okay. Uh, so you people are clear with the four types of minor connectors? You people are clear with the... Yeah, maybe it may be a metal pontic uh, Radhika. I am not uh, sure about it. Because if it is in the posterior, a metal pontic will do. But I will just uh, get back to you if it is in the incisal area or in the anterior portion. How do we take care of that? Okay? Okay, you, clear, you, are, you people are clear with the six maxillary major connectors? with the four types of minor connectors and with these rests. No problem external finish line, internal. Okay, somebody had a problem in external and internal finish line, right? Okay. So, uh, Saurabh, you told me that auxiliary rest you were not clear. Now you are clear how, it, how the minor connector connects the auxiliary rest to the major connector? Okay. And somebody else had a problem with external and internal finish line. Okay, before you people start going, let me tell you, there is a lecture tomorrow at 6.30. Okay, there will be continuing with the direct retainers and the indirect retainers. Preferably, I'll finish it in an hour. Okay, and on Saturday at 7 o'clock, there is another whatever was there tomorrow. The pre-test on your uh, CD and FPD. That is postponed to Saturday 7 p.m. Okay? Tomorrow, 6.30, we'll have a continuation of RPD. Saturday, 7 p.m., Dr. Bhagna will take the class. Okay? Okay, so, uh, yeah, Saurabh, I answered it on Facebook only. And you had also asked about beading. I told you we'll uh, talk about it in lecture today. You did not Okay, so see what I uh, got to know from the articles was, they said that a face bow has parts. That is a ear bow, a nasal orbital, a nasal orbital marker and your bite fork. Okay, so there they say when you are taking the axis orbital plane, okay, there you just need to have your this part, your ear bow for your orbital reference point and your ear point. This will help you in marking your axis orbital plane. When you need to orient your mandible to this axis plane, that is terminal hinge axis, yeah, that time you put your bite fork. So when you are not putting, there what they are asking you, there they are asking you how to measure the axis orbital plane. So axis orbital plane, you do not need the entire face bow. Only the ear bow is enough. So the link I have put there in Facebook, if you click that link, they, are, they have shown you step by step procedure and there they have mentioned tighten the ear bow. Axis orbital plane is your, this plane. It is your orientation axis. Okay, it is a reference plane with which you can put your mandible into, it is a reference plane. So that is the first thing you obtain. Next, you uh, put your bite fork and then you ask the patient to bite where you measure your terminal hinge axis. So, there are two planes. The axis is orbital plane and then your terminal hinge axis. I have explained it in Facebook. What are the two planes? Yeah, it corresponds to the alert tragus line only, I suppose. Because it takes the nasal points and it takes your ear points. So, I suppose it's the alert tragus line only. But alert tragus line is a line. We are talking about the entire plane. Okay? The plane which actually, uh, the orientation of the maxilla to the cranial base. 
for that you need only the year book when you want to put your mandible in orientation to the maxilla you put the bite book that is a but there are articles which say year book and face book to be same things okay but most of the articles say year book is a part of the face book so i guess we will go along with that because that question is very tricky because year book is also there kinematic face book is also there arbitrary face book is also there so i guess you should go with the fourth option Then they tell you about the terminal hinge axis. How would you measure the terminal hinge axis? Two thousand six. Okay. Can you measure the terminal hinge axis? That time you can talk about uh, the kinetic, kinematic, and arbitrary phase book because you need the entire phase book. You need your year marks also, and you need your bite book also. Okay. I'll still do a reading on that, and if there is something contradictory to this, I'll put up. Otherwise, if people can go with the option B. Okay, and beading you people. Answer given both. Both means C and D both. C and D both. All the three both. You cannot write. Okay, it says uh, option C, arbitrary or kinematic phase book. Okay, I'll get back to you on this then again. C option. Okay, I'll get back to you this on this again because that year bo is something which is very contradicting. If there was something else other than year bo, you could have gone with option C because. But year, if they are specified year bo, there must be a purpose. If I have that uh, solved AIPG 2006 paper, I will just uh, once check and let you know. Okay? Pardon me. Yeah, I have it. I have. I guess I have Gauri Shankar solved papers. I don't know whether I have 2006 because I myself gave me the exam in 2007, so I don't know in 2006 whether I was I had that paper or no. I'll just check. And I'll check the articles also. Okay. And beading, you asked a question of beading. Now, is that clear now? Yeah. And uh, someone had a problem with internal and external finish lines. Okay, that is the only uh, shunting. In prostate, prostate. I don't know. I. It's in CD. Okay. So I'll talk, talk about shunting also tomorrow if I get to. Okay. What is parallel to the alveolar ridge area? Rim is parallel. Okay. The occlusal rim is parallel to the alveolar ridge. Okay, I will just see that whether a term like shunting is given somewhere. If not, then shunting. Okay, but we'll still get get back to it tomorrow. Okay, in this part today, do does anybody have problems? Kamal had a problem in finish lines, right? Do you want me to explain, or you're clear with it now? Finish lines. Okay. Lohita had a problem. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Sunday. I don't know about it. Sunday there is a test. Okay. I'll tell you about that also tomorrow. Saturday there is a class at seven by Dr. Bhavna. That is what I know now. On Sunday about the test, I will. I think it's on CD and FPD only. Okay. Okay, so we will go back to finish lines and finish it fast. Others are all clear with all the types of minor connectors. Okay. Now, uh, finish lines is something which is given in lattice. Loita, you were there at lattice and meshwork at least the two subdivisions of the minor connector connecting the denture base to the major connector. 
Okay. Now, what is that? It's a minor connector which connects the denture base to the major connector. So, it is. No, no. Denture base is the acrylic denture base. Okay. Major connector is a metal part, and denture base is the acrylic denture base. Okay. So, it connects those two things by a minor connector, which is in the form of external or internal finish line okay it is something like this okay this is the framework of your minor connector okay this is your major connector over here okay and your denture base will come over here over this framework so this will actually help in connecting your major connector to your denture base now clear so this this framework can be either longitudinal that is lattice work or it can be criss cross that is mesh work okay now what are finish lines finish lines are something which is okay finish lines is there are two finish lines external finish line and internal finish line okay now okay you can see this diagram go with us this is the maxillary major uh, this is a minor connector the metal part over here and this is the major connector over here okay and this pink color above and below it is the denture base so the minor connector is actually connecting your denture base to the major connector now the inside surface okay on the mucosa the finish line is known as the internal finish line and on the external surface the finish line that is the junction between your denture base and your major connector is the external finish line okay so these are the two finish lines the external finish line is above and the internal finish line is below clear now what they say is this angle between the minor connector and the major connector should be less than 90 degrees or should be 90 degrees okay it should not be more than that okay i'll draw it here separately this is your major connector coming from here and this is your minor connector over here okay there is no acrylic denture base now we are just talking about the metal part so the angle between your major and minor connector should be 90 degrees or less than 90 degrees okay it should not be more because what will happen when you have something which is more than 90 degrees there will be more of acrylic if this is more than 90 degrees you will have a lot of acrylic over here okay and we do not want a joint like this we want a straight joint a bud joint clear now when we pour acrylic first we get the joint uh, angle between the major and the minor connector then when we are pouring acrylic okay acrylic base over here an acrylic base over here there should be a butt joint between two the metal and the acrylic okay this is the butt joint that is the joint should be proper it should be not angulated it should be in a proper uh, proper manner okay because of this angulation over here between the major and the minor connectors we will be able to establish a proper butt joint between the denture base and the major connector now clear the angulations are inside and the bud joints are outside now clear between the external finish line internal finish line at the bud joints okay all of you okay any other doubt tomorrow we'll be talking about the direct retainers and the indirect retainers and whatever doubts we had today about the pontic class okay so we i'll see you tomorrow then at 6:30 okay bye good night